Hey, so welcome back to the show, The Dog on Positive Way. And tonight we're going to talk about what it feels like to own a reactive dog. You know, like, do you feel like you're being judged by people? Do you feel like, um, you know, a lot of people feel judged, you know, because they feel like, well, what did you do wrong to your dog? And sometimes you didn't do anything wrong. And sometimes you could have done better when they were puppies. And that is a piece of the issue. But um, the judgment from other people of like blaming and stuff when you have a reactive dog really is not necessary. And, you know, it's it's just kind of mean, you know, and we need to feel confident. And I say we because I had a reactive dog and I had a couple of reactive dogs. Um, and over the years, and I've never had any issues with, with, uh, any of my dogs. I've always had multiple dogs, but in this situation, um, I brought one new dog into the house and guess what? That dog was reactive and it was with relationship. So don't do that. If you're out there, don't do that. And I'm talking to you about this because this is a reality of relationships and reactive dogs and aggressive dogs. Okay. So what wound up happening is that dog and my first Jack Russell started to fight. Okay. So we separated them and they lived basically separate lives unless we were human and somebody left a door open, which happened. And, um, they would, you know, get into it again. So, um, the next dog that I had adopted was, uh, another Jack Russell and he was five months old and I got him from this guy that I met and a uh, really nice man named Rusty. And he was like, I can't keep this puppy anymore. And you know, it was, he was too much for him. So here I am. I'm expecting, I'm expecting a Jack Russell, like scrap my first Jack Russell super hyper, super active, you know, and Rufus was very different. Rufus was a very different dog. Um, and he wasn't reactive right away. I mean, he wasn't very social. Like if I took him out to like a pet store, like pet smart or something, he wasn't having it. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, barking and growling. So I'm like, all right, this isn't happening. So, um, he was fine with my dogs at home. He was fine with Talu. He was fine with Scrat. He was fine with um, my other dog that we had temporarily were fostering, Sammy. And he didn't have any problem with those dogs. He had a problem with the one dog, Miles, that um, was my ex's dog. And that dog was also had some reactivity problems and from, you know, previous owners. So he had issues. Now <laughs> I'm not trying to be breed prejudice, but these are all small dogs and they're all terriers. Two of them are Jack Russell's. Um, so, you know, there's like, <laughs> okay, enough said about that. Um, but my point is, is that it's a lot of stress. And I didn't feel judged. I really didn't. Um, I managed the dogs appropriately. I put in whatever training. I'm looking because my baby girl is out here. So I'm going to pause you for one second. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So baby girl, that's Bella. She was outside. She came to the door. She's like, it's time for me to come in. But um, so, um, you know, with Rufus and the two other dogs, it was a lot, but there was full management that went in. You know, I, I designed a gate and had that installed in between the kitchen office and the living room area. And I kept everybody separate and that's how we had to do it. Um, and of course, all of my dogs were always created. Now, my ex's dog was not ever created. So, and that's a problem, you know, um, that's why I talk about how important it is to start your puppy off in the right way. So like I mentioned, okay, Rufus, he wasn't really well socialized when I first got him, but it was confusing because he was good with my dogs at home, but he wasn't good with the dogs when I went out on a walk or I went, you know, to just like a normal pet owner. Hey, let's just go. 
So it was like, hey, I want to be a normal pet owner and go, you know, take my dog to PetSmart. But that wasn't a possibility. But in the house with the other dogs, that, you know, from day one, he'd never met them before. Um, but apparently he had some issues before Rusty owned him um, with um, other dogs, his liver mates kind of bullying him. Supposedly, I don't know. So anyway, as Rufus's life progressed and my life progressed, things happened, life changed. Uh, I had a move, my health changed, my world got a lot smaller because of my illness. And that meant Rufus's world got a lot smaller too. Um, but you know, he still was completely socialized with people. Um, but anytime there was another dog in the mix, it was an issue except for a couple small dogs like Tucker, Skipper Key or Daisy, a dachshund, like no problems. Okay, great. Maybe not threatened. Big dog, forget about it. He's like gonna go and bark at that dog and, you know, try and bite the dog. Um, he got out of the bedroom one day because Tammy had her arms full, opened the door, and guess what? The little dog scooched by her, came around the corner, started biting Troy in the face. Troy is amazing. Troy has such a high tolerance. He was like, what is happening? As he's getting nailed you know, repeatedly, it's like, oh my gosh. So I'm telling you all this to relay and relate to you that there was stress in my relationship with my ex and there is stress in a current relationship when you have all this aggression going on and all the management. And what I mean by stress is like, did we close the door? Is the door closed? Did you close the crate? You know, almost like, <laughs> almost like making sure the oven's off before you go out, you know? Oh my God, did I turn the oven off? Um, just like stuff like that. That's like somebody else would say, you know, you're being a little macho. It's a little irrational, but no, it's not irrational, you know? And the fear is the fear piece for me was, um, you know, him getting hurt because he's small. Um, and I mean, of course it was frustrating. That's just, you know, but I dealt with it cause I managed him. I knew what to do. I knew, knew what I needed to do. Um, and for me, honestly, the management was easier for me to just separate the dogs. You know, I wasn't trying to, um, I'm, I'm going to say socialize, but you can't socialize uh, this, this is not the social period. Like I was talking before is like what a little over one month, to just a little over three months. There's, there's no socialization for this. Okay. At this age, he was, he's passed now, but he was, um, when we started having, I had started having more problems with him. I think he was like six, seven in there, you know, but I had moved three times. I had gone through uh, a really bad breakup. Um, he was stolen from me. Um, so he had been through a lot. Rufus and I went through a lot of stuff together. Um, so that did not help his behavior issue at all with, um, just being, I feel like his, um, reactivity was very much fear-based. It was like, I'm going to get you before you get me, you know? Um, and I also feel like it got worse because of all the things that happened in my life. And that happened uh, subsequently to Rufus. This is why I talk about future proofing, um, your dog. So your puppy, it's important. These are things that I did not prepare for. Um, but, and the frustration was just, you know, the limitation of what I could do with him, where I could go with him. Now, Rufus was amazing. He loved his crate, you know, I mean, I totally trained him and I did future proof him for everything. You know, I trained him, he went through my classes, somebody took him through my classes. Um, and of course I trained him, you know, um, so the, the thing was, is that my expectation with him, I have expectation on here because some people have a really high expectation. 
my expectation was like, it wasn't that it was low, but it was realistic. And I put expectations here because a lot of people have really high expectations. Like you're going to call a trainer. You're going to call me. We're going to evaluate. I'm going to evaluate your dog. And you think that whatever training we do, your dog is now going to be able to go to the dog park or now be able to, you know, uh, go to doggy daycare. And guess what? That's not happening. Okay. It just is not happening. And that's what I mean by expectation. It needs to be realistic. You don't have to lower it, you know, but please have a, a, a realistic expectation for your dog and for yourself too, so that you don't have all the frustration and everything going on. Um, and a resolution is to, you know, reach out and train because you can manage this. There are systems you can put in place in your house, um, outside when you go outside, some of you live in apartments, so you cannot escape, you know, or you don't have a yard. You cannot escape, you know, meeting another animal, another dog on your walk, perhaps, right? So you need to prepare for this. You need to do training and get your dog where your dog is focusing on you and that you can have that reliability and also change what those things that your dog is reacting to. Your dog could be reacting to a garbage can, you know, it doesn't have to be another animal, another dog or another person. It can be inanimate objects. It can be a truck going by. It can be, you know, I don't know, red car going by. I hate red cars. Whatever, you know. The the point is, is that you want to just kind of diffuse what those things mean to your dog. Because right now they mean like, oh my God, what is it? And I got to get it and bite it. Blah, 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 blah. Right? No. Like you need to change it. How do you change it? You compare something good with it. You can do counter conditioning with your dog and have your dog, you know, set it up where it's safe. Okay. So if it's a, another dog that they're reactive to get another dog that you really trust that you trust the owner, they're not going to drop the leash and all that. And you can be as far away as you need to be from that dog. But the point of, excuse me, I almost just sneeze. The point of having the distance is so that you don't want your dog to react. You don't want to bring your dog all the way to the threshold of them reacting, right? So you find out where that is and here, okay, it's here. And, you know, maybe it's uh, 20 feet. You're good at 20 feet, but, you know, 19, 18 in there. No, it's too much. Or maybe it's 10 feet and you're good, but closer than that, it's probably more than 10 feet. 10 feet's not that big, um, not that large of a distance. But my point is, is that you can train your dog and manage your dog by counter conditioning with food rewards, something that's really high value, working your dog when you haven't fed them their meal yet and giving them little treats, treat, 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 treat. You can go at a high rate of treating, or you can go just like every couple of seconds. As long as they're not reacting, just start treating. It's okay. You know, and then maybe take a step closer. Oh, no reaction. Good job. They can look at the other animal and we're going to use another dog in this situation. Look at the other dog. That's cool. You're not reacting. Awesome. Treat, treat, treat. Hey, Rufus called. They look at you. Treat, treat, treat. Okay. So that's where name recognition comes into play. All right. So it's not that you're like, oh my God, I can never let my dog see that other dog or see the uh, garbage can or, you know, trucks. I mean, you know, vehicles are everywhere unless you're living, you know, somewhere on a farm deep, deep, deep in the woods or whatever. Um, that's reality. So there are so many things that you can do and we are going to really kind of break that stuff down as I continue on in the season of what are some of the other things you can do. So I want to hear from you guys. Do you have a reactive dog? How does it make you feel? Do you feel stressed out? Are you arguing with your partner? Um, are you being judged by other people? You know, maybe your friends or your family. What's your expectation of your dog, you know? And what kind of things have you tried? Have you done any training at all? Or did you get your dog when it was older and your dog kind of came this way? So we're going to talk all about this stuff next time. But please share below and comment. And thank you.